Well, when I first got my trailer, I had dirt from a scare. I had got my trailer supposed to be in a brand new uh, van, Vanguard trailer. Um, long story short, two of my tires blew out. They changed the tires before I left the yard. They do give you the option to inspect your trailer inside and out. And if there's anything that's broken that needs to be replaced. All right, we about to get into it. Deandra in the building, North Carolina. What's going on? North Carolina, moving it rays up. Take it so wrong. It's just a run. Yeah, he's been like a helicopter. What's going on with you? All right, hey, man. So, on? so shout out to Holly for uh, getting us together. You was the one that uh, that referred her over to controversial company Super Eagle. Yes, sir. All right. So, I got her story. Uh, you know what uh, what happened to her over there. Uh, you have a different story to tell. You you actually. Uh, you rocked it out with the company for, for, for a little yeah, bit. About eight months. Okay. Yeah, about eight months. For about eight months. All right. So let's uh, let's hear your story. Would, uh, how did it all go down from uh, start to when you left? I mean, honestly, you know, when you first get your CDLs, you know, you be so excited, you know, to get out here on the road and you ready to travel, you know, then you got super ego and they hit you with all these broken promises. Hey, you know, we'll put you in a brand new truck, blase, blase. We're going to fly you up to Chicago on us. However, it didn't really go down like that. Yeah, I went to Chicago. They put you in a little Ramy check down room. You know what I'm saying? It, it ain't even worth living in, if you ask me. And then, you know, they come, they take you back and forth to where you need to go to, like for your drug screen, and they go up there and pick your truck out. Come to find out, once I actually finally, like, got in my truck, or whatever the case may be, first paycheck, they took out the, the hotel expenses, they took out the, the flight expenses, they took out all the Uber expenses, they took out the transportation for me to get to the hotel, back to them, they took all that money out. And then it was kind of like, once I started working with them, they were telling me, you know, you got to go through our dispatch. So I'm getting loads off the load board, but the numbers wasn't adding up to the distance and the miles. You know, for example, they'd be like, hey, DeAndra, we need you to go from Chicago to Idaho. I mean, you both know that's probably over 2,000 miles, okay? Then they hit you with, okay, uh, we're going to pay you 2500 Oh, I don't want to drive twenty. I don't want to drive 2,000 miles to $2,500. That $2,500 is going straight to diesel for me to get there, you know? So that right there was a the ripoff. Then the truck, the truck's really trash. You're always on the side of the road. Your tire's always blowing. There's always something going on with the trailer. There's always something going on with the lights. Um, I had to switch dispatches probably like three or four times. It was just crappy. And then one day, I was sitting at a truck stop, and I just started calculating all my money up. Now, don't get me wrong. I was with Super Ego probably the first four months. I pushed in probably like 30000 You get what I'm saying? But I didn't see it. I didn't see I didn't see the thirty thousand. Out of the whole thirty thousand, I probably seen not even exaggerating, probably five thousand of the thirty thousand. So that's when I came to terms is okay, look, something ain't right. I'm I'm away from my family, I'm doing all this driving and driving and I'm not seeing that from it. Most of my money was going to the I gotta pay for the trailer, I gotta pay for the truck, I gotta pay for my own my own gas, I gotta pay for this, I gotta pay for repairs, and I just feel like it's a whole bunch of crap. How you an owner's operator? And it's not even my truck. And I'm already paying for repairs. And I'm paying for this. And I'm paying for that. But I got to go through y'all for dispatch. Like, it's like they setting you up to fail. They setting you up to need them. And then the crazy thing about them is once you do a load and just say you low on diesel and they ain't booked you another load yet, you stuck unless you're going to put your money out your pocket so you can keep moving. Because they, they turn your fuel call off. So it's kind of like, you know, it was just, I just ended up leaving. I ended up going to another company doing tanker instead. But I wouldn't advise nobody to go through with Super Ego. It was just a whole scam from Jump Street. It sound good. And the crazy thing is they just called me yesterday and said, hey, DeAndra, we were just wondering if you want to come drive for us again. I told them straight up, no. they like, well, you know, we, you know, you can see the low board. You see it for yourself. We got a whole new team. You know, you should come give us another chance. I'm like, nah, man. 
you know, y'all y'all got over the first. Y'all, y'all done spent eight months with y'all. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't seen not one dime. Left y'all and went to another company in Chicago. Seen close to ten thousand dollars less than a month. <laughs> so you you do the math. So I just wanted to just share my experience because you got a lot of upcoming truckers and you got a lot of people who really don't know nothing about super ego and they be all happy and excited and they really don't know what they're getting themselves into. Like seriously, it, 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 it's a headache. It's very stressful, and I wouldn't recommend it for nobody that just got their CDLs or none of that. You know what I'm saying? Because this is how they get you. They get you like this. They don't care about your background. They don't care about what you. They it's like a second chance company. So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of iffy. I'm real. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like uh, I just wouldn't recommend it for no one. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? Let's uh, let's unpack this right here, man. So, from the start, uh, you, you just got your CDLs or you had your CDLs? I had just got them. <laughs> like literally just that's another thing that's another red flag i had just got them. they threw me right in the truck didn't give me no trainer didn't say hey do a road test let me see if you can drive a truck back a truck up nothing it was pretty much you get there go out there on the lot pick out what car you want pick out what truck you want do some paperwork next day you in the truck they tell you go pick up your trailer and next thing i know they put you on the load it's, it's they say it takes three days but hey it took me a day and a half i was already out there on the road so yeah, you know, I had just got my CDLs. No so experience. where you where where you get your CDLs from, and how did you actually come across Super Eagle? Uh, I got my CDLs from this trucking school called Trans Tech, located down here in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. And I ended up coming across Super Eagle. Um, I met a guy actually at a truck stop, and he was actually driving the Super Eagle truck. You know, and I to be honest, he was still new with the company also. So that's pretty much how we, you know, we exchanged numbers. And I pretty much, you know, just gave them a chance just to see, you know, just to stick my head out there, just to see if they was really about what they was talking about. Thing about it is, this is where I messed up at. I didn't do my research. I should have did my research before I went with them. But I can honestly say they taught me a viable life lesson. Dealing with trucking, do your research on the company before you go. Look at the polls, the cons, look at the reviews, look at the successful rate, look at all that. Because all that play a major factor in if you're gonna be if you're gonna be successful in the truck industry, facts. And I'm I'm glad you, you know, it's unfortunate that you had to learn the hard way. But you know, learning and 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 doing your research on these companies will definitely help you in the long run. All right, so I, I guess it's it's safe to say that these newer drivers that people would get in con you know get in contact with in in truck stops at the shippers and receivers they would be the ones like yourself talking up the company right yeah yeah pretty much so you say that this yeah, young pretty you, much. you say this young man wasn't even with the company long is is he still with the company you know from my from my understanding, I still keep in contact with him. He left. He left when I left. When I left, he left. It's kind of safe to say, and not to put you out there, but it is kind of safe to say that you can't go on what the drivers say about the company because they haven't been there long enough to get a good feel for the company. Would Would you agree with me on that? Uh, I agree with you on that, and, and also a lot of these new upcoming truck drivers, like myself at the time, I didn't really know. A lot of us w- are, are not really informed on the truck freight, so you got a lot of new drivers. They coming in and they accepting cheap freight, so it makes it hard for truck drivers to try to get money unless they are on as operator and or or they just with a good company. Other than that, it, it makes it real hard, especially when I was working at Super Ego because they had got so adjusted with drivers accepting cheap freight. So they felt like they can do that to everybody. You know what I'm saying? They feel like, they feel like you got to really be like up on game when it comes out of uh, the, the, the freight and how much the, the price of diesel is and 
to know if that's really a load that's worth taking. Because I've seen a lot of people I've been on the phone with, you know, my other truck drivers, and they were like, man, I just had to take this this crazy load, man. And then I'd be on the phone with some, and they be like, hey, man, I ain't got to do nothing but go 600 miles, and, and they paying me 1200 You know, I tell them straight up, hey, go ahead and take that $2 a mile, because at Super Ego, you're going to get about a dollar eight cents. You better hope you get a dollar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I totally agree. You can't really go by what, a, what, what someone else said, because you got to go by how long they've been with the company, their experience, their education on trucking and all that. You can't just go by that they word of mouth. So it's best to always just do your own research. So why not just uh, come out of school and and go with a starter company to to, to get your, uh, you know, to get your experience in? Why why you know why jump into you know leasing? Not just Super Eagle itself, but why jump right into leasing right out of school without without the understanding that you know now? Okay, and, I, and I, my honest opinion on that, I think I did it for the feel of privacy, if it makes sense. Okay, with Super Ego, you and your truck, you're by yourself, you don't got nobody watching you, you ain't got no camera on you, you don't really got too many people scrolling down your back. It's pretty much like you in your own little world compared to a company. Now, you got some companies where they got cameras all up inside the end cab, cameras all up everywhere, no privacy, they listen to your phone calls. In the whole nine other yards. So I guess you could say, just moving too fast. Like I said, didn't really do my research. Just moving off, just being anxious. Hey, man, I got my CDLs. I'm about to go get this new truck. I'm about to be out here on the road traveling. So just, just like, basically just an honest mistake. Something I shouldn't have did, to be honest. Something that I totally regret. And I don't want no, I don't want no one else that's coming into the truck industry to make the same mistake. So please do your research. Please start off with a company and get your uh get your experience up. That way, because if you're with a company, that company is going to train you, regardless if you got experience or not, they're still going to train you the way that they want their company to go by, they, their own policy. So it's best to go through a company. That way, whenever you're ready to leave that company, on your resume, you can at least say, hey, well, hey, DeAndre been over here working with J.B. Hunt for about three years now. You know, that lets me know she... She, she reliable, she trustworthy, she's going to stay on the job, blase, blase. You know, she didn't leave. She didn't just leave. She gave a two-week notice. You know, things like that. So, yeah, that's pretty much what my answer should be on that answer, on that question. <laughs> DeAndre, you, okay, so you, again, brand new coming out. Uh, did you let your uh, recruiter know that you, you know, you're a new driver? I, I, I. I did. I did tell them. I told them all that, man. They didn't care about none of that. <laughs> they didn't care about none of that. They were just looking at it like the more drivers we get, the more money we get. That's just what it is with Super Ego. They all for self. They don't. And to be honest, I mean, this is just my own opinion. You know, you walk in. And another thing is when you get there, it's so out of order. It's so disorganized. You're going to walk in there and be like, where do I supposed to go? There's no arrows. There's no sign. There's no sign that say new drivers. Uh, 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 this station over here, it just people all over the place. They walk past you. They're very rude. They all speak different languages. And, and you probably don't even know they're talking about you in your face. And to be honest with you, if you ain't really th- their culture or their their race, they probably ain't going to look out for you. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. I was in there with my head chopped off like, hey, where do I go? Like, who do I talk to? Who is my yard manager? Who do I need to speak with? Where do I do my drug test at? Like, I was just in there completely lost. <laughs> I, had to ask, I had to ask other people that, that went through the process where I need to go. I didn't. They didn't have nobody at the door. Like, hey, you know, welcome to Super Ego, you guys. You know, we thank you for working with us. You know, follow me this way and lunch on us. None of that. It was just put you in the trunk, go. Uh, it was a former driver that did a pop up at at Super Ego, and he got the tour of the building. Like he had the he had the executive tour of everything. They showed him where the the drivers lounge would be, where the new drivers who would talk to. So when you guys come in there, actually, it's it's nothing like that, huh? Oh no, ain't nothing like that. 
Sir, I ain't. You ain't getting none of that. You're going to be in there asking questions. Like, hey, where do I go? What do I need to do next? Who I need to speak with? Is this correct? You know, and then they, they sit there and they fill, they flip up some numbers like, okay, well, you want a 2023 Kenworth. All right, give us 125000 And we're going to charge you $600 for the truck every week. And then for your trailer, we're going to charge you additional $300. So, yeah, we want $900 out your check every single week. And then on top of that, they're already keeping you off the load. So you're not you're not seeing nothing. I ain't gonna, I'm going to be honest. My first week, I was in the hole. I ain't understand how I'm just not working for y'all. And my first week, I owe y'all money. I owe y'all money my first week working for y'all. That don't even make sense. So I had to get myself out the hole, still pay them, and still try to make a living. I, I rocked it out. I just had to rock it out and keep praying and keep praying to my higher power that something else was going to come through for me. And that's what happened. I ended up going to another company, got a $5,000 sign-on bonus, got paid per hour and per mile. Paid training also. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. So it's kind of crazy. When you actually showed up, uh, you you got a flight, you got the hotel, uh, they got you an Uber. How did you manage all of that? Because from drivers I talked to in the past, they had to pay for their own flight. And I, I guess the hotel was supposed to be included. So how would how did you all of that how, how, included? How was you able to finagle the at least the flight out there? I'm gonna be honest with you. I told you straight up. My recruiter called me. They were so desperate for drivers. Like I told you, they were so desperate. And he was like, "Hey, Deonda, you know, we're trying to get you out there." And I told him straight up, like, "Look, you want me to come out there to Chicago? You got to fly me to Chicago. You want me to come out there because I, I don't want to just take my earned money and fly out there. And, and I don't like what you guys." You know what I'm saying? I don't like what you guys, you know, presenting. And then now I'm sitting here trying to figure out how I'm going to get back. So my uh, my recruiter, his name was Mr. Roy Davis. He was like, okay, DeAndre, where you coming from? I told him. I said, Charlotte, North Carolina. And he ended up booking me a flight. My flight was $252 for one way. I got there. He called me. And he was like, DeAndre, I, know, I just noticed that your plane just landed. You know, uh, do you need us to come pick you up? I told him, yeah, and they said, I know. He told me where to be at outside the airport. They came to pick me up. They took me to the room, and then that, it went from there. I mean, like I said, all that all that money, all, everything that they did for me got took out of my check. So they didn't really do nothing. I did all that. I basically still got myself to Chicago. In other words, they how, didn't pay for it. I paid for it because I still had to pay it back. How, how much altogether did they uh, snatch out of you? Okay, the flight was two fifty two. I think I had to stay at the room two nights. They were charging they were charging sixty nine dollars a night. So that's another one forty. And then on top of that, the Uber the Uber that get from the hotel to the um to the from the from the airport to the hotel, I think that Uber was seventeen bucks. Uh they probably my first check, they probably snatched out about five hundred all together, plus tax on everything. On everything. About five hundred dollars, yeah. So, so in actuality, you still had to pay your way out there. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I still had to pay. I just didn't have to pay up front. In other words. So throughout the eight months, uh, you you had problems with the truck, with the trailer. What 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 kind of problems you were having? I mean, you just. Got the truck. That's like, one. That's uh, another thing that drivers is complaining about too. That they get the truck, and as soon as they get it off the lot, it it breaks down, and they gotta take it to the shop and wait and stuff like that. What's what's going on with these trucks, man? Well, when I first got my trailer, I had learned from my spirits. I had got my trailer supposed to be in a brand new uh, van, Vanguard trailer. Um, long story short, two of my tires blew out. They changed the tires before I left the yard. They do give you the option to inspect your trailer inside and out. And if there's anything that's broken that needs to be replaced, they will they will have you to get in line on the yard and fix your trailer. However, I guess they gave me some recap tires, some bad recap tires, and I ain't make it far. So I had two blown tires, got that fixed. Then I was coming through Virginia, West Virginia, 
as soon as you about to come down into North Carolina, you know that's a big old, big old hill. It's real, 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 real downgrade. You gotta, gotta slow it down. Long story short, my my trailer lights went out. I wasn't aware of it. It was raining real hard, and I was actually I had it was a line of trucks, and I happened to be in the front. And it was raining so hard, all of us got our hazard lights on. We all in the slow lane, and we coming down the mountain. And so when we finally make it down, I pull over to Love to go get some diesels. I come back outside. I see this guy at my truck taking pictures of the truck. He's taking pictures of the lights and plates. He he just, you know, he just having a ball over there by the truck. So I, I approach him, and I say, hey, you know, sir, can I help you? Is there any reason why you over here taking pictures of the vehicle? Like, what can I help you with? And he goes off on me. Yeah. You riding down the hill, almost killed everybody. You ain't got no damn trailer lights on and blase, blase. So I'm like, man, you know, like, you tripping. Let me go check and see myself. I go check my trailer lights out. I'm like, oh, man. So, you know, I apologize to him. Like, look, sir, I apologize. It wasn't intentional. Trust me. My safety and your safety is the only thing that really matter out here. I never put nobody in harm's way. Like, you know, that wasn't intentionally. I didn't know the trailer lights went out. Long story short, I end up staying a night at Love's, get in the truck line to get the, to get the trailer looked at. I sit there for about eight hours. I'm talking about I'm at Love's. Can't no technician figure out what's wrong with the trailer. Then some guy come in, and he said, hell, well, let me just check the wires. Maybe it's a shortage or something. Come to find out, <laughs> come to find out Super Ego had them um, nigger rig the wires. I ain't, I'm talking about like nigger rig the wires, tape. And they had a nigger rig it to the point where it was it was the shortage in it, in other words. So Love's ended up fixing it, but I mean I lost out. I lost out on that day. I couldn't move. I was sitting down for about eight hours, man. I mean I I lost out on I lost out. I was late on my load, late on my delivery. It was just a it was just a mess. All because of them just trying to shorthand and do a job instead of just doing it right. You know, if you're gonna put drivers in these trucks and you're gonna send them out there, make sure that you send them out there with something safe and something that's gonna get them to and from their destination. It's like they just don't even care. It's just like they just all for the money. And I'm be honest, man, they ripped a lot of people off, especially with that load board. I'm talking about, like, seriously, the load can be offering you 4500 Super Ego will tell you, oh, I got a load for you going out for 32 And then on top of that, they want 10% of the load. So if I'm taking that load for 32 I still got to give him 10% of the load. He already done got me. Because the original load is 4500 So you already done got me anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, man, you just I just had to get away. And then on top of that, they, they do their logs illegal. You oh, went out oh, of time. Hold on. So you, so altogether, you, you, you lost out a lot of money. Did you have to pay for the repair? Yeah. Did that come out of your pocket? Mm-hmm. So you. That came out of my check. So you lost the day. You had to pay for the repair out of your pocket, and you still took an L on the load as well. I took a I took a loss. I was so angry that day. I was, that, that's the day I was ready to just say, "Hell with it." I'm gonna be honest with you. Excuse my language. How is that your responsibility uh, of getting the the wires fixed, and the wires was already messed up before you even got the truck? Why? Why they? I why? why my, they? I said it to my driver manager. Yeah. So what was his? What was his reasoning behind taxing you for that? He basically, in other words, was like, "Look, you know, you this 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 your this your this your trailer until you pay it off. So, in order for you to move, in order for you to get some money, you're gonna have to get. You know, you're gonna have to pay for it. And I'm on. That's when I told him, like, look, man, if I'm gonna be giving y'all three hundred dollars out of my check every week." For a trailer that ain't even mine yet, it's technically still y'all. Like you gotta make it make sense. If you gonna have me, if you gonna charge me that price, I need to have me a brand new trailer that's working. I'm talking about like that's working, everything legit all the way through, front and back. And the crazy thing is, I went through like four or five trailers before I got to that trailer. That's the bad part about it. Other trailers missing rivets, uh, the floorboard got a hole in it. The, uh, it, it, it got a crack in the roof leaking or, or the hinges off the dough or, or the, the dough won't properly close right. Man, man I'm telling you, man, 
They got a whole yard full of trailers that's trash. So actually, you 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 guys are assigned that trailer. There's there's no dropping hooks or anything with uh, Super Eagle. Nah, we assigned that trailer. Like once they give you the truck, they send you to the trailer yard. And they tell you what your trailer is, and you go out there in the yard, and you go look for the number and, and go find your trailer that they assigned to you. Once you get to that trailer, you got it's your job to inspect that trailer. You're inspecting the cable wires. You're, you're inspecting everything on that trailer, the tires, the rims, everything. Everything on the trailer. You got to hook it up to your truck, make sure the lights work, all that. You feel me? That's how they do it. Wow. And they – Yeah. You you guys is learning real quick. <laughs> You gonna learn today. You gonna learn today. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. Y'all learning <laughs> real quick that uh, that if something goes wrong, y'all they didn't offer you any type of maintenance account or anything like that. Like, wow. What's... Nah, only thing they only thing they hit you with is okay. Look, if you got maintenance repairs, right? So what they do is they'll be like, okay, Deandra, uh, that last job that you did, that last repair that you did end up coming up to nine hundred dollars. All right, so what we're gonna do is instead of us taking the whole nine hundred dollars out your next paycheck, we're gonna break it down in increments. So what they'll do is they'll they'll take like two hundred dollars out that week, next week they'll take three. Next following week they might take one fifty. Next following week they might take one seventy five. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still paying for it though. So that's why I was telling you I made the money but I didn't see the money. Setting you guys up to fail, man. That's that's crazy. And as far as the fuel car goes, because some drivers say it's it's better to get your own fuel card. Like they say, when you get with Super Eagle, and after you get everything said and done, the next thing you need to do is to uh, apply for a for your own fuel card. Uh, a lot of drivers mention the fact that if y'all don't get no load or anything, if y'all not assigned a load, they they shut your fuel card off. Have, have that happened to you a, few, uh, a, a bit? Look, I don't need you to tell me how fucking good my coffee is, okay? I'm the one who buys it. I know how good it is. When Bonnie goes shopping, she buys shit. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how Super Ego do it. Yeah, that's how Super Ego do it. They did me like that before. So once they did that, what I did was I told myself, okay, DeAndre, if you gotta drop this load off at such and such time, before you even before you even go drop that load off, make sure you got at least a half a tank in your in your truck. Because you know for a fact that these people are gonna turn that card on. They did me like that, they got me a few times like that. After a while I started picking up on like, okay, I ain't finna be out here. It's cold, I'm all the way out here in the mountains, I ain't got no fuel, waiting on my paycheck. And I can't even wear my truck to keep cool because I ain't got no fuel. I ain't got no diesel in. Nah, I ain't doing that. So then what I did was I went about it that way. Then I end up, after a while, I end up starting, I end up applying that Flying J and I end up getting my own my own fuel car with my name on it. I wasn't using a fuel car. That way I was able to cut back because whatever you spend on fuel, that come out your check too. I don't know if I, I, don't, I don't know if I put that in there too. Whatever you spend on fuel to go drop their loads off to do what you do, they take that out your check. So if you spend twelve hundred dollars a week on fuel, that twelve hundred dollars is coming out your payment, out your check. They taking that out. They taking the, the three hundred dollars out for your trailer. They taking the six hundred dollars out for your truck, and they taking off the money for the insurance. So that leaves you with nothing. <laughs> you might you might have grossed eight thousand dollars that week, but once they take everything out, you ain't got nothing. What you got? A thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars. And you don't drove over five thousand miles? Nah, man, that ain't even right. That's a rip off. Damn, you guys That's driving. For, you guys driving for free over there. What's what's what is up? Why why you guys? I mean, keep, listen, man, you, why why are you, you why, why, like that now. <laughs> why are you guys keep going to that company, man? I mean, you 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 uh, sharing I want your one story. Time. I want one time. You you sharing your story, I, I you know, and other drivers, you know, they share their stories with me and everything. I mean, how how is you guys being lured into working for this company? Well, you already you you already explained that you know. Cause you didn't, man, they make it sound good. They make it sound good. They hit you with, yeah, uh, come get your own truck, uh, low payments, 
uh, 90% yours, 10% go to dispatch. They just make it sound so good. You know how, you know how like, they just sell you a dream. They just selling you hope just to get you through the door. Once they get you through the door, they give you a rope, and then they let you hang yourself. That's exactly what they do. They false flag. And I'm still trying to figure out how, why I'm even on their contact list. I ain't, I didn't even abandon their uh, equipment. I ain't do none of that. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, was you nice enough to like, after, after the eight months, you said, I can't take it no more. Was you nice enough to, to drive the truck back and, and just give it back to him? Hey, yeah, I did. You want say the crazy part is, I don't know if you got time to hear it real quick. It shouldn't be long. I was doing a drop off for Super Ego at this company. And when I backed up into the dock, I noticed this guy, pop, he hopped out of his truck and he was in a tanker truck. First thing came to my head was, man, I'm tired of Super Ego, man. I got my tanker endorsement. I'm about to see, I'm about to see if they hiring. So boom, I hop out the car, I hop out the truck, I talk to him. I'm like, hey, you know, y'all doing any hiring? He's like, yeah, go around to the back, talk to our guy that's over training. He over, he over truck. So I'm like, all right, cool. He said, matter of fact, I'm gonna give you his number. So I give, I call him. His name was Bill. I call him. I'm like, hey, Bill. You know, um, I just ran into one of your drivers. You know, I was just trying to see if you guys were hiring. Was you guys looking for any drivers? He like, we we is actually. So I'm like, you know, um, he like, do you live in Chicago? And I'm like, nah. I said, but um, I moved Chicago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just trying to get away from this company that I'm working for. I'd be all the way honest with him. He like, you got time to come in and talk to me? So I go in and I talk to him, and he's like, well, you work for Super Ego? I said, yeah, I just dropped that last load off. And he was like, huh. I said, he said, uh, why are you ready to leave them? I said, man, they scamming, man. I said, they ain't paying me right. I ain't making no money. You know, I got to get away from them. He was like, well, if you don't mind me asking, how much did they How much did they tell you, you that you was getting off the last load that you just brought to me? I said, well, they told me I was getting 3000 He said, woof, yeah, you might need to leave them alone. I said, what you mean by that? He said, Man, he said, look, I don't usually do this. He said, but I can do this because it's a family-owned a family owned company. So, you know, I can show you this. So he, he he go on his computer, and he like, look, this is what I originally paid Super Ego for you to bring that load from from Nevada all the way to Chicago. They actually paid $3,900 for me to bring that load from the, Nevada back to Chicago. I was only paid 3000 And then I still had to give this back 10 to 10. You get what I'm saying? So that really left me with what twenty seven hundred to the thirty nine hundred. So he was like, "Well, how long you been driving?" I told him, "I said I've been with Super Ego going on about seven months now." He like, "How long you had your PDLs?" Or you know, whatever the case may be. So then you know, he liked me. He gave me a little tour of the building, whatever the case may be. He like, "Look, you got to do your physical." He said, "You have to do a physical." He said, "Because you're gonna be doing tanker, so we got to make sure that you can." you know, lift a certain amount and pull on a certain amount, get up and down. He said, so I'm going to you go take a drug test and do an actual physical test. He said, if you pass that, you good to go. So that took me about a week. So what I did was I kept working for Super Ego. I gave him a two-week notice. I hit my uh, driver manager up. I was like, look, I don't think this is working out. You know, I'm going re- to be returning y'all vehicle and y'all put me back in. And, you know, because Super Ego, they do offer you to walk away lease. That's the good, that's about the only good thing that they didn't lie about was Super Ego. It is a walkaway lease. Okay. So, anyways, I go through the drug test. I end up getting a job. At the time, I ended up staying in my truck in Chicago because I was trying to wait for the outcome of the drug test and all that stuff. Once I got the okay from the new job, and I went in and signed my paperwork and, you know, did all my paperwork and sent, showed them my social, set up direct deposit, I hopped straight on in the truck. Remind you, I'm in, I'm in West Chicago. Uh, uh, Super Ego is in Amherst. Chicago. I hopped straight in the truck, drove right on over there. Same exact spot I picked it up from. The trailer in the truck. Security came over there and said, hey, you can't drop off no truck over here. You're going to have to take it to the yard. I said, man, listen, I'm about to leave these keys right here. I'm about to take a picture of this truck, and I'm going to send it to my driver manager, let him know I I left it parked right here, and y'all have a good day. And that's exactly what I did. Left the truck, left the keys, took my pictures, and, and, and sent my email with my pictures attached. Super Ego reached out to me the next day, and I was like, "Did y'all get y'all truck?" They said, "Yes, ma'am. We got our truck." It was like, "Is there anything we can do to, you know, to, to, to keep you or whatever the case may be?" And I was like, "No." I said, "I'm going over here with this company." That's when I started working for the other company, and that was that was just a life changing event. You know what I'm saying? With me coming in, really no experience with tanker, 
getting paid decent money. I'm talking about I was getting, what I was making at Super Evo, I was getting, making triple a week at the new company. So I was just like, yeah, that was the best decision that I ever made, to be honest. So, yeah, to be honest, ask your question, I did go out of the right way because they did, they did tell you that if you abandon equipment, they'll make it hard for you to get a job. They'll add you onto this list and bandit list and stuff. So I did go about it the right way, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't want to go through those issues or nothing like that. So I did turn back in the equipment the same way that I got it. I made sure the truck was clean inside and out. I took all my stuff out. You know, I ain't like other people that just damage the property, leave it anywhere. I ain't do that because I'm not that type of person. That's what's up. And kudos to the other company for for you know giving you the opportunity man that not too many drivers are are, are lucky to, 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 to get that type of hookup man uh let's talk about the e yeah, because you you, you you mentioned that uh that they do finagle the e i i'm well aware of you know of them finagling the e how how did they finagle it for you god damn jimmy this some serious going made shit me and Vincent would have been satisfied with some freeze-dried Taster's Choice, right? <laughs> and he brings this serious gourmet shit on us. What flavor is this? Knock it off, Chewy. Hey, man, you know, when you be out there, you already got to give them all your money. You be out there, you be trying to, like, work over. You be trying to keep the truck running. You know what I'm saying? You be trying to keep the wheels rolling. So what I usually do is I'll call it, like, when I got about two hours left, I'll call and be like, hey, man, I'm trying to, I got to get this load here by such and such time. and you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to at least go for another three or four, five more hours. They'll be like, all right, Miss McBride, just give us about an hour. We'll call you back. Shoot, it'll be about 30 minutes later. They'll call back and be like, all right, DeAndre, can you pull over? I need you to pull over, put your car, put the truck in park. I want you to sign out and sign back in. And I sign back in. I got a full 11 hours. Look like I ain't even drove it all today. I'll be like, man, they is off the chain, man. For real, man. Super ego, man. Super ego is something else, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's something else. I mean, it's unfortunate. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't suggest you guys doing that, but but super ego force kinda kinda puts you in a in a no win situation by by you know, by messing with the loads and forcing you to, to get the load there on time, by giving you messed up loads and I, don't you think that they know that the lows that they're giving you, they know that you won't be able to make it? Man, I, my dispatcher used to do me. He, I, I, I told you that's why I had a, a few dispatchers. I had one dispatcher. He, he, he'll want to take the weekend off, so what he'll do is he'll go ahead and set me up all week for all my lows. He'll have me down for like two or three lows. And two, he'll be like, all right, DeAndre, I want you to pick up and take to drop off in Florida. Then you're going to pick up your Florida and you got to drop it off in um in Arizona by this date. And then when you pick up in Arizona, you're going to drop off this date on Monday. I'd be like, man, come on, man. Anything can happen from now all the way up to Monday. I, I don't want to be in a situation where I got to run around with my head chopped off because I got to make sure that I'm on the right speed and right time. and do. That's too much. That's too much on the driver, man. That's too much. And, and to be honest, when I got with a new company, it was like a relief because they didn't do that. Doing the call, doing editing at the laws. It was straight. Look, this is what you're gonna do, and you go, you you gotta shut down. When you hit your 11 hours, you gotta shut down. They don't want to hear that. If you don't make it, you just don't make it. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, yeah, man, super ego is something else. <laughs> super ego is something else. Like seriously, so they'll they... fix that law for you. And like you said, they put us in a bind where we don't really want to drive over 11 hours, but we we in a situation where if we pull over and stop. And, and not make it on time, you got the broker down they back. So now this ma- dispatch mad at you. So now dispatch going to try to hit you with a little low number. And if you don't take the, the load that they want you to take, they'll have you sitting all weekend with no load. You ain't got no load. You sitting for days. Your fuel card off because you ain't got no load. So you just sitting in the truck just like, bro, I'm, man, listen, I ain't going back. I don't care how bad it get out here. I ain't going back. I ain't going back to Super Eagle. That's one thing. Hold on. They 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 will actually put you in a bind like that if you feel if if they feel some kind right. of way about you. Yeah, listen. If you don't take what they offer, like if I'm on the phone with my dispatch, like, look, man, ain't no way you trying to give me a dollar a mile. I'm not doing that. They'll be like, all right, I'll call you back. They'll call back with another load, but it's still gonna be. Within the same dollar, it's still gonna be. I turned that down too. 
they'll call back again and be like, all right, DeAndre, I got something better for you. I got something for 150. I'll be like, man, I'm not finna, listen, I'm not finna drive all those miles for a dollar fifty cent a mile, man. I'm not doing that. You got to come correct, man. Like, come on. what? I be on the phone with my dispatch talking to him like, look, bro, give me some good, give me, give me a good load. Like, you already getting paid off me. If you help me get paid, that's no money for you. I have to, I have to try to like compromise with him. That's how I used to have to talk to him. Like, look, you give me a decent load. That way you can have, you, your paycheck going to be right. But when you keep jipping me, but at the same time, I had to think about it. They don't care about jipping me. You know why? Because they got all, they got thousands and thousands of drivers that they ripping off. So they're going to get a good paycheck regardless of what. You go to Super Ego, everybody's driving customers. Everybody got foreign cars. Everybody. You in a truck driving your life away all these miles. Ain't making no money. All the money going to them and their family. I ain't doing that no more. Did do a they did do a TikTok video of the of the gala that they that they all had that one year. Ooh, man! Yeah. You you do know that uh, that Super Eagle do have a class action lawsuit going on with them right now, do you? I, I was aware of it, but I don't really know how to like you know what I'm saying too much information on it. I don't know like how it pretty much you know how it's going, but I hope I fall in the time dates and stuff like that whenever they do finally get them. Super Ego runs up under multiple shell companies. Was was you up under one of those companies, or was it Super Ego all the way? Nah, I was a Jordan. Mm-hmm. You got Jordan. You got Rocket, you got Floyd, you man, they got all type of names, man. I'm starting to think they take their children names and just, just I don't know what's going on with people, man. But I was up under Jordan. But you got Rocket, you got Floyd, you they got some old, they got different names. Hey, look, Super Ego so bad. You go to truck stops like T A and, and, and Loves and Pilot, and you got to get your truck fixed, and you tell them that you work for Super Ego, or they see your trailer Super Ego, man, they already start shaking their head. They be like, man. Here we go with these scamming motherfuckers. They, I go in there, they be like, so what What account y'all using? They be on the phone with them, like, so what account y'all using today? They have to ask them what account. They be like, all right, put it up on the Jordan. Put it up on the Super Ego. Put it up on the Floyd. I was like, man, this is crazy. Down to the truck stops and caught on to them. I was like, man, this is wild. They using, well, you know, drivers say that Super Ego is a holding. So it's just the name of Super Eagle, but the actual companies that you know that y'all get paid from and doing business with will be companies like Rocket, Jordan, yes. Twin. Yes, when they when you get your when you get your statement from getting paid, it's not gonna say Super Eagle at the top. It's gonna say Rocket Expediting LLC, Jordan Expediting LLC, Floyd, or something like that. It's not gonna ever say Super Eagle. The only thing they say Super Ego is the trailer, <laughs> Super Ego. And I think they just use that for advertisement. Why are you traveling all over the world, driving all these miles from them? That's the only thing that's going to say Super Ego. Nothing else going to say Super Ego. Not even your contract. They don't even say Super Ego. Yeah. Well, DeAndra, thank you very much for coming on with me right quick and having to, having to sit down. No problem. Man, hell of a story, man. Hell of a story about controversial company, Super Ego slash Jordan slash Floyd slash Rocket slash whoever else they want to (laughs) use. Oh, man. This is a cautionary tale, drivers. This is a cautionary tale, man, y'all. Uh, y- y'all know. I ain't gonna lie to you. Y'all know about y'all know about controversial company Super Eagle, and we got more and more yeah. drivers that's that's being talked into coming with that company, and y'all y'all learning the hard way. But I, I guess y'all gonna need that. Y'all gonna need that spanking. Y'all gonna need that. Y'all gonna need yeah. that that pedal on the ass so that y'all know next time what not to do. Or who not to or who not to mess with, and also to know to do your research a little bit more extensive now. So you say you got you you say you got 
the company calling you back now. Like they they said that, that like, you well, I, swear, I can screenshot my call off. They just called me yesterday. They literally just called me yesterday. And then I talked to Holly this morning. I said, oh, I said, Holly, that's crazy because they just called me yesterday. She's like, man, you need to get in touch with my people's lockout, man. You know what I'm saying? At least tell your side of the story because, you know, you got a little bit more experience than me. That's what really got me on your line, Holly, because me and her, we was at CDL's training together. All right. All right. Shout yep. out to Holly. You know, definitely shout out to her. But thank you for the thank thank you for the conversation and and wow. I'm glad everything else is working out for you. So let's let's keep in touch, man. I will, man. Look, you take care and safe travels, all right? Big cheese got it locked, boy. Want you to let me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real way, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, you know?